part of the series on testing a ring final circuit, but what actually is a ring final circuit? A ring final circuit is generally used to power 13 amp sockets, as you can see in this diagram. And um, it's a ring because it starts at the fuse board, goes round all the sockets, and returns to the fuse board. Heads in the ring final, it forms a ring. So you can see here, with all the sockets removed, it is just a ring. It starts at the fuse board and returns to the fuse board. This is right at the very beginning. This is the initial testing. There's no power at the board yet. we just got the cables run round. But of course, you just wouldn't run a cable all the way around like that. We need to attach sockets to it. So what we've got in reality is a number of breaks in the cable where the sockets are. So the cable leaves the fuse board, goes to the first socket, then there's a connection onto the next socket and the next connection and so on, back to the fuse board. This is why ring final testing is important because we want to, machine, want to make sure that these connections are continuous. We're connecting the live to the live to the live to the live all the way around, the neutral to the neutral all the way around, and the CBC to the CBC all the way around. We haven't got them mixed up at one of the sockets. This is why testing is so important. It's important before we start doing any meter tests that we null out our test leads. Now what's that mean? Well nulling out is removing the resistance from the probes. So if we put these probes together and press the test button, we get a reading. We don't want that reading adding to any testing we're doing. So it'll be a function on your test meter whereby when you put the probe together and press a button, it'll null out the reading. You'll get a reading of 0, 0.00 on your display and you'll know that the leads have been nulled out. And any reading that you do get when you're doing your testing is purely the circuit that you are testing and the leads are not adding to that resistance. So that's what nulling out the leads means. And it's important you do that for every test. As you can see here, the multiple breaks within the conductor are connected together at each socket. So it's very important that the conductors are connected to each other. So line to line, neutral to neutral, CPC to CPC in every socket. And this is what we're doing when we're doing our ring final testing. We're testing the end to ends of the conductors. So we test at the end to end at the back of the fuse board that the CPCs are continuous all the way around that the neutrals are continuous all the way around and the lines continuous all the way around so we'll know that we haven't got any miswiring in the back of the socket we haven't got the neutral going onto the live or the live going onto the CPC and so the three things that we measure when we're measuring for the ring final test we're measuring the end-to-end -end resistance of the neutral conductor that's known as RN the end-to-end -end resistance of the line conductor, that's known as your R1, and the end-to-end -end resistance of your CPC, which is known as your R2. Another important reason for testing the ring final circuit's continuity is the actual current carrying capacity of the cable. In a ring final circuit, the cable is used as 2.5 squared twin in earth, twin in CPC. And that has a current carrying capacity of around about 27 amps. And that's in ideal conditions. When there's no stresses on the cable, it's not going through insulation. It's not grouped together. It's not going in a hot environment. So the cable has a capacity of 27 amps. But the fuse protecting a ring final circuit is often a 32 amp fuse. So that on paper doesn't sound correct, does it? Because the fuse is rated higher than the cable and it's normally the other way around. The cable has to be rated higher than the protective device. But we can get away with using 27 amp rated cable on a ring final circuit because the load is actually shared. Because in effect with the ring the cable goes down two different legs. One leg goes in that direction, one leg goes in that direction and so the load is shared. And so the 2.5 millimeter square cable is okay to be protected by a 32 amp fuse. But the reason why it's important to check the continuity is because if there is a break, say in this socket, the 
line conductor is not connected to the next line conductor. That means cable won't carry any current on this leg. All the current will be carried on this leg. And we'll end up with the situation that we've got 32 amps or more could be pulled down this cable. But this cable is only rated for 27 amps because it's not continuous. The load's not shared. So that's why it's important to make sure that the ring final circuit is continuous so the load is shared all the way around and one leg is not doing all the work and pulling too much current and potentially overheating. You measure continuity, it's quite simple really. Uh, you need um, a tester, something that can measure low ohms and you test the three separate conductors and make sure that they are continuous. So. You've got three conductors, R1, Rn and R2. R1 is the line conductor, Rn is the neutral and R2 is the CPC or earth. So you connect at the fuse board or wherever. Don't forget this is a dead test, this is pre-energizing. Initial installation, there's no power in the circuit whatsoever. And this is one of these, you want to be doing this test before the circuit is energized to make sure it's correct. So with your meter, you put one probe on one end of the ring and the other probe on the other end of the ring and it measures the resistance of that whole ring. In this example we've got a reading of 0.37 ohms. And that's telling us that we have a continuous circuit. We then do exactly the same with our neutral conductor. We do the end-to-end -end resistance. Probes on either end of the circuit we should get a very similar reading to what we got for the R1 because this cable is the same conductor size 2.5 millimeter squared the cable should be the same length so you should get very much the same reading if you get something that's quite a long way away there's, a, there's an issue with the circuit what we do now is the end-to-end -end resistance of the CPC same as before put our probes on either end of the ring get a reading this time we've got a reading of 0 0.6. You think, hang on a second, that's a bit higher. We R1 and Rn was 0 0.37, this is 0 0.6. Is that correct? Well, it is correct because the, the CPC in the Twin and Earth is actually a smaller cross-sectional area. Line and neutral, their cross-sectional area is 2.5 millimeters squared. The CPC is only 1.5 millimeters squared. So it's a smaller conductor, it's going to be slightly higher resistance is what we're getting. But we still need to verify that reading we're getting is the correct ratio between what we were getting for the line and neutral. We can do that by timesing the readings we got from the line and neutral by 1.67. So it's just a simple bit of maths. Line and neutral, we've got 0 0.37 ohms. Times that by 1.67 we get a reading of 0 0.61 ohms, which is there or thereabouts, the reading that we took, the uh, resistance reading. So we know that the ratio between the conductors is correct, and we're happy with the reading that we've took. But we're going to do a little bit next on what the readings actually mean, because you can't just accept any number. So we'll look at that next. Right, we've got our reading. We've measured our R1 or line conductor, and we've got a reading of 0 0.37 ohms. Now is that an acceptable reading? Are you happy with that? We can't just look at a number and think, yeah, that's good, I've got, I've got a reading. That means I've got continuity, so I'm happy. You have to have a think about that number and think, is that correct for the circuit that's been installed? You might have installed this circuit, and you'll know that you put 50 metres of cable in, for example. So let's do a bit of maths. In the on-site guide, it tells us that the 2.5 millimeter squared copper conductor has a resistance of 7.41 milliohms per meter. Now we can do a bit of simple maths here. So we've put 50 meters of cable in. We know it's 2.5 millimeter squared, so we've got all the numbers we need. So we times the 50 meters by the 7.41, that's the resistance of the conductor, and that gives us a reading of 370.5. Now we need to get our units right because this is in milliohms and we would like the reading in ohms. So we simply divide it by a thousand 
and that gives us a reading in ohms of 0 0.37 so we've got a reading of 0 0.37 so we're happy with that we know that the, the run is 50 meters and we've got the correct kind of reading for that it could be the case, this is why testing is important, you might get a high reading. You might get a reading of 1 ohm, 2 ohms or more. And if you get a high reading, it could be the fact that you've got a loose connection in one of your sockets. So you can go around and check all your sockets, make sure everything's nice and tight. Or you might have a, an open reading, you can't get any continuity at all. Then you know that there's a break in one of the sockets. So this is why the testing is good, it's picking up several different faults. It's picking up if you've got a loose connection. It's picking up if you've got no connection. You might also get a reading which is a little bit lower. If you get a reading of, say, 0.1 ohm, thinking, hang on a second, that can't be right. I've put 50 metres in. And the simple maths tells me it's got to be 0.37 ohms. And I've got a reading of 0.1 ohm. That means there's something wrong somewhere. And you might have a connection between this socket and this socket. And the meter's just reading a short leg of the ring final circuit so that's another fault it finds so in doing this continuity test you're finding out a lot of things you find out if your polarity is correct you're finding out if the circuit's been installed nicely it's all nice and tight and you're also finding out that there's no interconnections between sockets so it's a good test right so let's just have a quick recap we've done the continuity of ring final circuit conductors we know that we need to test the end-to-end -end continuity of the three conductors in the cable, the line, neutral and CPC. And we have a value which we've measured and depending on the length of the circuit we can work out if that value is correct. We'll know that the CPC is slightly higher reading than the others because of the smaller cross-sectional area of the CPC. And we know by doing this test we've um, confirmed that the connections are good and tight in each socket, there's no interconnections and there's no cross connections. We know that the current carrying capacity of the cable is correct for the fuse that we've used and we can tick off another test on our initial inspection and testing and we can move on to the next test. Okay? Okay, thanks very much for watching this video on testing the continuity of ring final conductors and do let me know if these videos are any use or if you want me to cover anything in a particular way and also I'd really appreciate if you'd like it you could subscribe or just like or give me a comment just let me know what you think okay thanks again now bye